face of huge community pressure to protect our land and to protect our water from the ravages of dangerous unknown coal seam gas. So this is a welcome first step to finally have our Federal Environment Minister being able to look at the water impacts of these massive coal seam gas and coal projects. We welcome that. I've had legislation in the Senate for the last 18 months to do just that. So it's wonderful that the government has finally listened to the community, um, finally um, properly smelt the wind on this one and decided that it needs to act to actually address that scientific and community concern. Um, my criticism is, though, is how convenient that all of the big coal seam gas projects have already been approved by this Environment Minister. How convenient that suddenly now he wants to act on water impacts after he's already ticked off the big three in Queensland and, of course, Gloucester just a month ago in New South Wales. If the Minister was really serious about protecting our water from coal seam gas and large coal mines, then he would be applying this to Gloucester. He would be revoking that approval and going back and making them pass this water test. So that's the first challenge for Minister Tony Burke. The second challenge is there seems to be a trend lately of the Minister approving something and then asking details later. This is an incredibly worrying trend where you tick off on a project and yet say, we don't know how the impacts will be managed, just tell us later, Mr Coal Seam Gas Company, you can do what you like, just put some reports in later, that's fine, have your approval. So I'm afraid even though the Minister will now have the ability to act on water impacts, it remains to be seen whether he will actually act. Uh, will he actually refuse a coal seam gas company or a coal mine? He hasn't done so yet. I would like to hope that he will listen to the science and the evidence but unfortunately he hasn't been listening to the science. The National Water Commission, the CSIRO and the government's own independent scientific committee have all been pointing out the dangers to water from coal seam gas and coal mines and most recently the scientific committee has pointed out the huge information gaps for one particular coal seam gas project, Arrow, in Queensland, the fourth big CSG project and yet the minister is still barrelling ahead issuing these approvals without the relevant information. So it's it's wonderful that we now have a water trigger in, in our environmental laws, but we want to see the minister actually step up, listen to the science and actually knock back some proposals where we don't have the evidence to say that they're safe. That's what our expert bodies are saying and it's about time the minister listened not just to the community, which he finally seems to be doing, but also to the science, which says this uh, activity is too risky. We are risking the health of our groundwater, the health of our communities that rely on those aquifers for drinking water, um, and the health of our regional communities more broadly. And of course there's the climate impacts. The government still hasn't done independent analysis to say whether coal seam gas is even any better than coal. We still don't know. There are so many unanswered questions and yet the government continues to approve everything. So I'd like to see that change. Um, whether it will remains to be seen. Will the Greens support the legislation? Look, we'll have a look at the bill, um, but if, as it indicates to be um, an expansion of the Environment Minister's powers so that he could actually act to protect water if he wanted to, then it's something we'd support. It sounds a lot like the bill that I've had in the Senate for the last 18 months that, interestingly, the government weren't prepared to support. So, as I say, it's all very convenient that they've now had a sudden change of heart. I think it's wonderful if it's community pressure that's forced that change of mind, um, but one could imply there's some cynical political um, motivations going on here, but I'll leave that to the, the commentators to speculate. Will it allow um, coal seam gas mining companies and agriculture to coexist better, do you think, this legislation? I don't think coal seam gas can coexist with agriculture. We do not know if it's safe for groundwater. And where you've got uh, two sets of stakeholders relying on the one set of resource, that is our precious groundwater, um, you simply can't coexist. There's no science that says we can coexist with coal seam gas and farmers. Um, of course, the industry likes to claim that they can and that they'll pay compensation. There's no amount of money that can compensate for the fact that your water resource is just dried up and that you can't farm your land anymore. There's no amount of money that will compensate for the fact that um, our regional communities rely on this groundwater. And if it's not there, then that will change the face of our landscape here in Australia, our community landscape, our environmental landscape. So I think we have an awfully long way to go with the science before we can make any claims about whether coal seam gas can coexist with anything. My hunch is that it can't. Thanks everyone.